Welcome to Barry T's Garage. Good to have you back. Now, this is a 1909 Elmore, 1910 really, but it's a uh, two-stroke. Oh, two-stroke. Two-stroke. So okay. Okay. kind of crazy how it is. Um, so when we got the uh, car, it actually has a, a step piston. So on the bottom half of the piston is six inches in diameter. On the top half of the piston is actually about three and a half inches in diameter. What? And you have three rings at the top, two rings at the bottom. And then basically your, your uh, crankcase is on the bottom. Uh -huh. And on the other side, they actually have a fuel rotor. And what a fuel rotor is, on it's only, Elmore's the only one to ever use it on the two-stroke. Okay. And it, a, uh, it's a shaft, hollow in the center. It has four holes where the carburetor sits. And as it turns around, it drops fuel and air into each pocket, which delivers it to each jug. So almost like a fuel injection for back then. Right. Yeah. So, but it's just crazy for an Elmore. I mean, it's the... Uh, now, going back to those pistons, what was the reason for the... Because uh, you bought them, actually, uh, the two rings actually use that to draw air and fuel into the cylinder. Okay. The other three rings on the top part of the piston is the compression part. Okay. So the intake valve was at the bottom of the piston? Yeah. Kind uh, of? They're actually, it's not really a valve. Midway? So okay. It's, it's, you know, not, you think a two-stroke has a revalve. This doesn't That's have any That's true. Other. That's right. So... There are ports inside these jugs. Yep. And as the ports, they're open up, and as the fuel comes and delivered in, in it, the rings draw up into the Pull cylinder. Pull it up. Yep. So it's two stroke up down. That's all it does. Right. And being a two stroke, it's going to have a power every downstroke. Yep. So that's a lot of power. Yeah. For, for 1910. Yeah. So crazy. So. Wow. And this, this car is in beautiful condition. Yeah. Do you know when it was restored? Uh, this was actually restored by an older gentleman and actually, unfortunately, never got a chance to finish it. I see. And uh, when we got it, I think we uh, uh, got it from somebody that just threw it together um, because there was a lot of things that were wrong with it. The rings were seized at the piston. The uh, rotor shaft was in wrong. Uh -huh. um, just a few odds and ends. It was actually just thrown together. So. But I, I got it running. Okay. So uh, unfortunately, we've got a lot of rain lace and had a really good test drive with it. So okay. that's what I'm waiting for. Still, still yet to come, huh? Still yet to come, yep. Now, how did the uh, oiling system work on uh, The oil system is basically, your oiler is basically, a, you can't really see it down here, but it is a um, oiler. It, it doesn't really produce any oil pressure. Uh -huh. It just drops oil flow. Yep, look at that. Okay, and it delivers to the tubes. So the two tubes oil the journals on the crankshaft. The other one goes on the other side and, and shoots oil right into the, where the throat of the air and the fuel go. Okay, so... Primarily, it's oiling the, the crankcase yep. and the crankshaft. And throws oil, and into, throws oil the into the fuel mixture. Of the carburetor, so it draws it to each cylinder. Right. So, and I, I'm not up on the fuel uh, oil mixture yet, so I'm putting it in the oil just to make sure. So, okay. In the gas. Keeping it a little experimental still. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the you know, first time I don't even want to hurt anything. Right. Uh, the other thing, cool thing about the thing is actually the distributor part of it. Uh -huh. And it's basically just a little box. And as that rotor spins around, delivers spark to each cylinder. Oh, you're kidding. That is really cool. That was also wrong timing, too. So. He, oh, yeah. So you yeah. had to work that out. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you know, no repair manual. So 1910. <laughs> so wing it. Yeah. You have to... That's my, 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 it's my, basically my thing. I wing everything. So <laughs> Reverse engineer That's everything. It. Okay, and is this also a starter pedal down here? Uh, no? This is, is actually the uh, what turns the uh, fuel rotor to advance it. So you can advance the timing, and you can also advance the fuel delivery as well. Interesting. Yep. And then your two pedals on this side are your emergency brake and your regular uh, brake. Your gas pedal's up here on your timing. And then this one, there's a rod that comes through the floor, and it's actually a uh, compression relief. For the exhaust give it more power so you just opens up the exhaust so you give it more power okay so yeah. the hot rodders today they think they're yeah all... things already been done before so <laughs> they didn't invent that either no <laughs> wow yeah. and of course you can also adjust the timing on the steering wheel correct too, sure. yeah what about the cooling system a cooling system basically is just a water flow no uh, water pump uh -huh. it just uses a uh, convention of the cycle through the engine so there's no pump Okay, so it's the thermal siphon yep. style. Are these uh, tip acetylene or are they... These are gas, also headlights, yep. Yeah, well, this is quite an advanced car for 1910. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the fact that I got it running, that was a struggle, you know what I mean? It's, 
How much time did you have to spend on it? Uh, probably about, uh, I would say probably two months, taking it apart, put it together, taking it apart, put it together until I find how to figure out everything works. Right. You know, because there's no, no manual. It's Nobody like to trying call. to figure out the combination on a safe. It's yeah, safe. exactly. <laughs> Only I didn't have a stethoscope, so. <laughs> That's good. Well, thank you, Andy. You're Appreciate welcome. that. You're welcome.